This video was made possible by Squarespace. Build your website for 10% off at squarespace.com HAI. The US-Canada border is a work of art. Modern art, that is, because it looks like a three-year-old drew it, they couldn't even successfully draw a straight line, and it just doesn't make sense. The fact that this line was so poorly defined and drawn means that there are still disputes today on exactly what is the US and what is Canada, but 200 years ago, this line led to an entirely new country arising. For a short period, about 13 years, all of this area was part of the British Empire. You see, for the longest while, this area of Canada was French, but then Britain won it from the French in the six-year, eight-month, four-week, and one-day-long Seven Years' War. That began the 13-year-long glory period of British rule over much of the inhabited part of North America, but then oops, Britain decided that taxes were going to be a thing, so the colonies decided that British rule wasn't going to be a thing, and independence was declared in 1776. The two countries did some recreational fighting for the next seven years, but then they sat down and signed the Treaty of Paris. Not the 1323 Treaty of Paris, or the 1657 Treaty of Paris, or the 1810 Treaty of Paris, or the 1812, 1814, 1815, 1856, 1857 Treaty of Paris, the 1783 Treaty of Paris. That 1783 Treaty of Paris defined in its second article the border between the US and British Canada, and included in that section was the line defining a portion of the New Hampshire border as at the northwesternmost head of the Connecticut River, meaning the northwesternmost headwater of the Connecticut River. The problem was that the US and Britain disagreed on what that was. According to the US, you see, the northwesternmost headwater is Hall Stream, which flows directly into the Connecticut River. According to Britain, though, the northwesternmost head of the Connecticut River started at the creatively named Fourth Connecticut Lake and encompassed the streams that connected the Third, Second, and First Connecticut Lakes and Lake Francis. Therefore, the US believed the border with British Canada to be this, while Britain believed it was this. This inevitably caused issues as both countries tried to administer this small rural area. This area would see both Canadian and American authorities acting as law enforcement, but the most pressing issue was that both Canadian and American tax collectors would come and collect tax. This double taxation was, in the residents' mind, unacceptable. Staying on brand with the American Revolution, the residents therefore declared independence. In 1832, the Republic of Indian Stream was formed. The residents wrote and established a constitution, started a system of government, passed laws, established taxes, they acted just as any other country, and at least based off what we know, seemed to do pretty well considering they were all first-time country leaders. Understandably, the legitimacy of this declared country was and is disputed. Of course, the process the Republic of Indian Stream went through to declare their independence was not all that different than the process the United States went through decades earlier, and the US seems to be fairly well recognized today, but the US had more people, guns, and George Washington's. British Canada basically ignored the claimed independence of Indian Stream and continued to send their law enforcement and tax collectors, while the US actually seemingly might have recognized the independence of Indian Stream. The US apparently started charging import duties on goods coming from Indian Stream just as it would for any other country, thereby confirming its independence. Eventually, the King of the Netherlands, who was acting as an arbitrator between the US and Britain, declared the area part of Canada, and the residents were therefore asked to perform their mandatory military service for Britain. Indian Stream was having none of that, and wrote to the US Attorney General asking to be part of the US, just not part of New Hampshire. The Attorney General said no, and that they were still part of New Hampshire, so the New Hampshire militia got ready to invade Indian Stream and take it by force. Canada then said that they would send their military to defend Indian Stream, as they still considered it theirs. After a long stalemate, though, New Hampshire called Canada's bluff, and their militia militia invaded and occupied Indian Stream. It was then, by all measures, the United States, and the Republic of Indian Stream was happy because that's what they wanted all along, to be part of one country rather than two. The border was legitimized to make Indian Stream American with a treaty in 1842, and the US went off happily into the sunset, never fighting with anyone ever again. If you want to both establish an independent country and almost start a war between two superpowers, you should make sure your country has a website, because when the International Court of Justice looks at your country's website as evidence in your trial for crimes against humanity, you want to be sure that the website they look at is well designed, reliable, and safe. Squarespace helps you build a website that's all that, even if you have no experience, because their website builder and customizable templates make it almost impossible to build a bad website. They handle all the complicated behind the scenes for your website so everything runs smoothly, but in case you have any questions, they have award winning 24-7 customer support. If you want either you or what you make to be found, you need to have a website. So make sure to make yours with Squarespace for 10% off by signing up today at squarespace.com slash H-A-I.